All right, Mr. GK here. <clears throat> we have uh, my buddy, Mr. Dirty White Boys, Texas Star Sweet 16. And, uh, well, you can see that it definitely has seen better days. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Dirty White Boy has sent uh, four brand new boards to me. Uh, well, which I can uh, kind of see why he would want to put brand new boards in this thing. Uh, you can tell this thing's had some good use and uh, it's uh, ready for a rebuild, I can say. Whew. I mean, that board's completely missing. I can't remember if you sent that board with it. It may be in the box, but anyway, it's missing. <laughs> At least the relay is intact here. This is a very, very expensive relay. You could pay up to 40, 40 to 45 dollars for that relay at places if you had to replace it, which is just outrageous. You could put a $10, $15 relay here and work just as fine, but we have the room situation, the actual space that is a uh, good relay for the space of how uh, how short how the height of it is pretty slim which is what you want with this particular deal I can tell this relay has went bad and somebody's replaced that somebody's added a little different key and circuit here so we're going to strip all this out of here and actually uh, for the first time build a sweet 16 from the ground up I haven't had to do this before I'm going to do a power wire upgrade. Um, a lot of the hardware on this amplifier is rusted. As you can see here. We're going to get in there and replace all that with stainless steel hardware. Uh, going to add you some feed on here too. So this uh, amplifier can actually stand up on its legs. It, it, this does have a fan kit on it minus the feet it's like somebody has took off the feet anyway these are the boards right here that came straight from Barquet Electronics uh, the only thing negative about it is we have board one two and three this is supposed to be board four but this is actually a Texas Star 400 board so I already talked to you about that, Mr. Dirty White Boy. And what I'm going to do is I'm pretty much going to have to put you a board together. And then I'll just trade this board for it. So uh, pretty much every Texas Star part that Texas Star uses, I have. Very fortunate to have that. So, I mean, even if I have to build a fresh board for you, I will figure it out. I'll have to go over there and see what I need to do, but I need to get you a board ready and built for you for the fourth board. So, uh, and we're dropping H cheese in here. He wants to throw some H cheese in here, so I got eight matched high HFE value H cheese. Some of the highest HFE value actually that I have received so far. These are 76. Seventy six HFE using their curve tracer. Some of the highest values I have received. I'm glad to see them starting to rise up. Alright, well I am going to start stripping all this and basically just strip this thing down to the heat sink. Uh man. <laughs> I pretty much see what's going on here. They've added a switch here for the fan. Um, may have to give you a call about that. If that's what you want to do. If you want to keep that like that. Or if you want me to replace this front. With a fresh front without a hole there. And do the fans the way Texas Star pretty much makes them uh, by factory so I have to give you a holler see what you want to do about that yep. uh, re 
remote fan. Everything seems intact on the back. We'll be removing all this, doing a power wire upgrade. It's going to be a good bit of work, a little bit of labor, a little bit of labor. So I need to jump on this and try to get this, uh, try to get this done. It's going to be a be a bit of bit, bit of a time time deal here, no doubt about it. All right, we'll be back, y'all. All right, got it all stripped down, man. Now I'm going to uh, pop these switches out, the switch over there, and uh, pop those two uh, female plugs out and go give this uh, frame a good wash and the heat sink a good wash too. Go ahead and wash the, uh, probably go ahead and wash your two lids too, man, see if I can't get some of that rust off of it, man. But, uh, anyway, man, I had a little idea after doing all this and seeing these two, since I do need some extra holes probably for the power wire upgrade, I could change these two plugs into a single four pin, I believe, four or five pin mic jack. Maybe we can do you like a dual wine boat so you can turn the box on and off and turn your sideband delay on and off. You could go as far as turning the uh, fans on and off too, but I know this is going in your mobile, so I'm pretty sure you're going to want the fans to come on and off as soon as you turn the amp on and off. So I thought that'd be a neat idea. I ain't never done a wine boat for a Sweet 16. We'll see what you think about it. If you do want to do that, I'll give you a nice discounted price for the wait time on that wine boat. So we're going to be building this thing from the ground up, man. Whew, it's going to be a little bit of labor. Let's do it. All right, brother, in here washing this thing down so we can get it looking pretty. You can wash the heat sink after that. Uh, another thing I went ahead and did is uh, for the bolts they use on the SO239s is uh, 4 40s. I'm upgrading to a 6 32. I'm going to put you some Teflon uh, SO239s on here. The ones that were on there, they've uh, seen better days. I'm going a little extra and beyond for uh, my homeboy, Mr. Dirty White Boy. He's been waiting a good little while for this. So I'm going to go a little extra further than I maybe would normally do. Although I like to think I go a little farther with each uh, repair anyway. But you know, let's get this thing cleaned up and looking shiny. And uh, probably drilling them out a little bit possibly for the uh, strain release. But I'll figure all that out later. Alright, we'll be back. Now, doesn't that look a lot better? A lot cleaner. Got all the oxidation off. Got the heat sink all cleaned. Alright. Here is your old front, which has a hole drilled in it. Somebody had to switch a switch uh, wired up for the fan. Here is the brand new front that I will be installing for you. Okay. I'm going to clean off these switches here. Get them all cleaned up. And uh, one of the resistors is blown for the LEDs. I'm thinking I may just uh, replace those LEDs with blue ones for you. At least that's what's uh, rolling around in my head right now at the present moment. So, let's go ahead and get get going because this is going to be a little timely process I'm kind of going to be scatterbrained while doing all this since I've never done it before but I'm going to be taking notes so if I ever have to rebuild one of these things from the ground up again I will be able to do it about two or three times quicker I'll be back alright I could have swore that I had a uh another fourth board of a sweet 16 laying around that was in decent shape but I didn't so I basically had to build you 
a board for it. So basically, I got this board right here. The only thing that was on this board was the two transformers and the diode and the 25 ohm resistor. So everything else you see on here, I had to put on here myself. So I had to add a cap, filter cap, input, splitter. I had to wind the transformers. And this is a part right here I had to completely populate the whole key in circuit. I had to drop the relay down here. I just decided to do the relay this, uh, this way right here. And of course I had to go back to one of my uh, very trusty diagrams I drew at one point when I had to replace a bias relay for a Sweet 16. <laughs> I was about to draw me one up till it, I remembered. So I had to drop them 10 ohms and everything else you see on here and go ahead and like I said wind it up. I went ahead and put this on here. I hadn't quite yet decided how I'm going to do the power up, wire upgrade. So I went ahead and put this on here just for now. I'm uh, pretty sure I'm going to be removing this along with the other ones and doing a full power wire upgrade. But, uh, and I went ahead and mounted these spacers right here on all the boards, which I like doing whenever I pretty much build a Sweet 16. So in the future, if they ever... If the board ever warps or anything, if the board ever warps, it will not short out. So I will be right back. Alrighty. <clears throat> Got them all mounted with uh, new hardware, new spacers, new uh, 4x40 uh, Allen head socket screws. All right, went ahead and tested for shorts, although I know there weren't going to be any shorts, but still, still like to test them. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, the relay mounted. But first, I'm going to go ahead and mount the SO239s right here in the back. And uh, then it'll be time to go ahead and start wiring this thing up, man. Got to wire up all the bias connections. Got to... Um, um, figure out exactly how I'm going to do the power wire upgrade for this butte and also start wiring up the new remote uh, module. I'm going to draw me a little diagram. I'm that type of guy I got absolutely terrible, terrible, terrible short-term memory. So uh, when it comes to wiring something that I'm not used to wiring every day, I like to kind of draw it on paper so I can kind of follow it. It's just everybody's got their negatives. That's one of mine. Short term memory. <laughs> we'll be back. I probably done said that four or five times. I'll try to keep saying, quit saying that after every little clip. But I will be back. Alrighty. Alright, so we'll go ahead and uh, let's see here. We. Starting to wire everything up here. We got the uh, power wire upgrade chokes. I already soldered to each uh, transformer as 14 gauge for four rats, which gives you more inductance than uh, factory. Okay, we're starting to wire up everything now. Went ahead and installed our five pin jack for the uh, upgraded remote capability which will be using a uh, ymo wireless remote i talked to him on the phone he said that's a go for that got the fan uh, plug put put back got all the strain release installed for the power wire upgrade okay uh let's see here of course we got all the uh bias wires all the rf wires installed we got the uh, brand new uh, combiner installed you got the uh, output loading capacitor installed the metal cap which is three uh, 225s in parallel I think it equals around 70 something pico if I remember correctly so I'm starting to wire up the uh, 
power switches now and uh, I've already got uh, two already hooked up to the remote so that's what I'm working on now getting this thing uh, wire up this is my first complete sweet 16 build from the ground up and yes it's definitely a lot more a lot more uh, labor and I anticipated big time uh, another cool thing about this feature I'm going to be dropping a third relay right here okay what this relay is for is uh, Mr. Uh, Dirty White Boy is going to be able to have two different options for his fans okay he's going to have a remote with four buttons on it he can turn the amplifier on and go ahead and turn his fans on if he wishes or he can leave the fans off and basically once this board right here becomes 115 degrees then this thermal switch right here is going to make continuity and send power to the fans okay so you got two different options you can manually turn your fans on or you can wait which is how the, the factory setup is, is set up so we're on the way hopefully going to have this thing finished up today need it to be finished up today that's for sure all right we'll be back all righty yeah this bad boy all wired up now We had it completely wired up. The remote's completely wired up. Fan wired up. So now it is time to install the transistors. Which I already have matched up already. Pretty high uh, HFE value of 76. So let's go ahead and get the, uh, the heart of the whole amplifier. Let's get them all mounted in here. And uh, I figure out what I'm gonna do about your feedback circuits. Let's see. If these are gonna be reusable or not. Uh, uh, I'll count how many we've got. This is in good shape. I may just have to get some new uh, new feedbacks put in here. So we'll drop these uh, transistors in. And then I will install the power wire, and then after that, we will uh, do some testing. I'm waiting on the five-pin uh, female so I can make the remote. So I'm just have to leave that be for now until it gets here. I just did not have a five-pin plug here in stock. Sometimes you gotta make an order all right well we'll be back with the uh, transistors mounted and the power wire ran and soldered down so far so good i've got all the wire ran a lot differently than the way texas star does it uh, by factory i've got a lot of the wire hidden um, uh, some of it up under the board got a lot of it ran right here on this end it goes this direction a lot of times you'll see they'll just run it over the board and it'll be kind of messy you know they're trying to build them amps and they're trying to get them out the door and get them done quick you know it don't really matter which isn't going to change anything your performance but to have, to have all this extra power wire which is going to be bigger than what's factory i wanted to kind of make a little bit of room I'm sorry, I know that radio in the background is probably pretty loud. 
All right, with a I'll be back. That on the basis of Sorry, I keep saying that. Best, a campaign finance violation. All right, got her all finished up. Got all the feedback circuits installed and everything. I already did a quick key with it. It's doing over 500 watts. Just hitting it with the radio on this small supply. That's just my little first test to make sure everything's good. Had a little hiccup there. I had to get over uh, real, uh, real quick. Uh, which I actually learned a little something new about these amps. <sighs> Trying to test the bias on each section with the uh, feedback circuits off and uh, each of them was going into oscillation. I even called my buddy over to Texas Star, talked to him for a little bit. He said he had never seen anything like that either. Now, when somebody tells you that has been working on these things for longer than I've been alive, you, you know you probably got something to do with the HGs. But yeah, just having the just simply having the feedback circuits right here off the circuit, just trying to test the bias. Each section would go up in the oscillation. Pretty weird, huh? So I'm going to make sure to never try to attempt to key a Texas Star up or check the bias without the feedback circuits installed. And I can't 100% tell you I understand why it is. The feedback circuit is an RF circuit. But, you know, it is what it is. So now I'm going to go ahead and tackle the fan kit. Get your leg put on, two legs, and uh, get some of them uh, rusted hardware changed out to uh, some stainless steel, and uh, get your remote built. This has been a four-day project. Can you believe that? Well, yesterday I was pretty much uh, was pretty much spent on. Figuring out why in the world I was having that issue. I had to do a little change too right here. Um, so I'm bringing the bias right here on this pad from the relay. That kind of was done while I was testing. And uh, yeah, it's been about four hours yesterday on this. Could not, I mean, I was frustrated. I don't get frustrated much with these amps. I've worked on so many of them months to years. But, uh, hey, I had something else to my book of knowledge. <laughs> All right, got brand new feedback circuits now, along with everything else. You got yourself a brand new amplifier here, man. Except for the heat sink. And the frame and everything else is brand spanking new. Of course, up this board right here, but everything on it's brand new. All right, we'll be back. I get you. you probably you probably get tired of hearing me say that, don't you? That's probably about the eighth time I've said that. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear it, uh, Lynn, but I'm not sure it relates to well, anything. Yeah. I want to give a prime example of why you don't put wires through metal without grommets on them. Okay. Now the way these Texas Star fan kits are done, when you buy them brand new or the wires are on the outside, whoever wired up these fans, um, whoever wired up these fans, they had the wires actually going inside here so for, for example these wires right here would be sitting on the heat sink and these aren't even teflon wires not very smart at all and i'm just pulling them out and you can see it's just shaving the wire while i'm pulling it out look at that just shaving that's another reason why you always use grommets when you're taking wire through metal always absolutely always but yeah man you can tell these have been out in moisture nasty and dirty and I, I just it's hard for me to do especially something like this a, a brand new build 
brand new build and just have a nasty, dirty, rusty hardware like this. It just doesn't feel right to me. I still ain't been able to get in touch with you, bud, to ask you if you wanted me to go this extra mile for you. But I'm doing it anyway because even the fan grills are rusted pretty bad. Pretty bad. So these are going in the trash. Yes, you could sand them down and paint them something, but it really ain't worth the time, honestly, to me. So I'm putting brand new fan grills on here for you. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and get this wired up. I got this one done for you. Got this one done for you already. Put you a little uh, lamp right here. Went ahead and wired these up the best way that I could with how, how they're already wired up. Got you some good loom on there to a plug. We're going to do this pretty much similar to the way Texas Star does it factory. We have two, uh, two stereo plugs. They, they use two phonos into one phono. But I uh, found this little adapter right here. It's uh, actually made for stereos, but I went ahead and went here and just modified the inside, tapped the uh, tip and the ring together, just to use the tip and the ring to carry our voltage for our fans, and then use the ground as the ground for the fans. So this right here will take the top two fans at the bottom, this will take the other two two fans, and we'll plug straight in the back. So I'm going to get this all set up, then I'm going to do me a quick video on the output of the amplifier before I put the fan kit on, uh, because I don't have a regulated power supply here right now, so I can't just hook these fans up on the unregulated, well, I can unplug them, yes, but I'm still going to do a video of the output probably first, then I'm going to go ahead and get you, take me a break, come back out here and get this sweet little uh, remote done for you. Which will be plugging in right there. I had to order some plugs, uh, uh, some some five pin mic plugs that came in today, so it's perfect time. All right, I'm not gonna say I'll be back this time. All right, here we go, all uh, tidied up, amplifier wise. Um, got both the fan kits. Uh, both uh, parts of the fan kits already done down here with uh, uh, plugs on them ready to plug into the back just got to build the uh, Y moat now and I uh, just want to show you the output of the box and again this is very embarrassing for a guy like me at it, 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 uh, my position but I don't have a good high amperage regulated power supply at the moment and I am not about to sit here and even risk stressing these transistors or keying them up on high voltage, especially being brand new like this. So I've got this hooked up to my 100 amp unregulated supply, which, you know, it's sucking the juice out of, literally. It's nowhere near big enough, but I at least just need to show you that the amp is working and doing what it should be doing. Okay, I've just got the one pill driver, 128.79 doing about 100 watts PEP uh, driving them into the 8 HG's and I'll go ahead and let you know just don't run it like this right here which is dropping about 13.2 volts it's doing right there about 650 RMS which is understandable once you put it on I can just I could literally just switch this over to this 200 amp unregulated supply over here if there were Toshiba's and it would probably be doing close to eight, nine hundred birds. But, like I said, I'm not going to risk anything. I've got it on peak. Got 2,500 watt slug. So that is reading the top scale. Let's turn the amp on. I absolutely hate doing this on unregulated supply with these HGs. They are sensitive to voltage. Do so that's right there at dead nuts on 1500 watts and just to show you i don't know how good you can see that oh dropping to 13.3 volts 
so 1500 watts peak on 13.3 volts just on the one pill driver is phenomenal and like I said it's doing about 650 bird which is nothing special for 8 to uh, 2879s but that's because it is sucking the juice out of that um, power supply so she is working the way she's supposed to I've uh, already actually <coughs> hooked it up to my battery bank over here and did a little burn-in test for about 15-20 minutes let her warm up good which is something that you absolutely have to do with a new build I even like doing it with repairs as well especially when you put in some new transistors it's good to let let it do a burn-in you don't want to send that thing off to somebody and let them burn it in and something go wrong and you could have adjusted something or arranged something or fixed something or beefed up something here and, and waste somebody's hard-earned money having to ship it back to you plus I, I i got too much work to do to be having stuff had to be shipped back to me all right man i'm gonna go uh, get in the bed we are on day number four now with this which is outrageous but it ain't every day that i build a sweet 16 from the ground up and have to actually build one of the boards and have to go through pretty much four to five hours of uh of uh, just troubleshooting trying to figure out why in the world it was going into oscillation with no coax hooked up to it not keying it but just trying to apply bias so i can check the bias which is something you always do before you apply any rf to any texas star shout out to my buddy m-i-k-e over at texas star appreciate your help brother all these years all right we'll be back with the finished product with the wireless remote hooked up and the fan kit all mounted and all that good stuff man this has uh, been one heck of a project nothing crazy crazy custom but just a little bit of labor involved mr dirty white boy thanks for your patience i'll be back dang it i said it again didn't i all right brother here you are and this thing turned out absolutely superb 10 out of 10. This is the very first Texas Star Sweet 16 modified with a Wymote wireless remote. <coughs> As you can see, is right here. I just got done building that for you. I'm trying to get it kind of sit up there so you can see the uh, see the LEDs. I ain't really got a good place to sit it, but anyway. Here's your remote. And I'll just sit it right like that. It'd be fun. Here's your remote. Okay. So your first button right here, this is going to be on and off for the amplifier. Okay. Just disregard this remote right here to the right. Just act like it ain't there. One, two, three. Okay on and off for the amplifier this button right here is sideband delay on and off this button right here is to manually turn on your fans which of course is engaging the third relay now on the amplifier the one I installed by the thermal switch and keep in mind you can leave these fans off the thermal switch is still active so as soon as the board right there becomes 115 degrees the fans are going to come on okay i've got a lamp that i installed too it's on the other side of the amp for the uh for the fans a red uh, lamp pretty much using red lamp for the fans blue for on and off green for ssb <laughs> one thing i did have to do is uh get in here and modify the um the switch right here because when I turn on the wireless remote the LEDs on the front wasn't coming on the reason why te uh, Texas Star utilizes the single pole double throw switches right here so when you turn them in the off position the 10 kilo ohm resistor being used for the LED then is used as a bleeding resistor for the uh, filter capacitors which isn't needed it's just another one of the 
uh, little cool aspects that Texas Star does. You know, they're going to bleed out just fine, but it's just a little nifty thing they've been doing with the Sweet 16s and 1200s for a while. But when you use a remote like this, of course, when the switch being in the off position like this, the LED is pretty much shorted, so the LED is not going to come on. So I went ahead and modified that so that that and the side band delay will come on. Uh, another thing, here's your splitters right here. I, I luckily had laying around. Uh, this right here is a little twist tie that I'm going to attempt to connect right here just to kind of hold these up for you. And um, uh, the only thing I haven't done yet is put the screws in the case. I've got some brand new screws just came in from my buddy at Texas Star. Um, and I'm going to put you a new label right here for you too. This is a little seen it's better days I should probably should have already done it who cares I'll get that done for you and I need to put the Anderson connector on the power wires for you as well alright so here is the Ymote wireless remote to turn it on as you can see that right there indicates the amplifier is on the right LED which is the blue LED you can see the corresponding LED right here coming on okay this button right here is your SSB delay. That's utilized with a green LED. And of course your regular LED on the front it comes on for the SSB. And then here is your manual fans. The old fan kit, my friend. I cleaned both of these fan kits the best I could. Probably spent about two hours cleaning them getting them ready uh, the L brackets here which did not come with the amp I had to get them I went ahead and took the feet that was off because they were cracked and seen their better days and put you four brand new feet on here for you and uh, you know the fans were quite dusty I tried to clean them the best I could I need to get me a uh, uh, air, air compressor here man help help clean some stuff like that all the fan grills are brand new now done a lot of work on this man to get this thing done for you brother so as you can see all things are on now we'll just turn the SSB off and you'll notice too when you turn the SSB delay off you'll see that it's going to kind of fade that's just the SSB delay uh, undraining, uh, the SSB capacitor, delay capacitor undraining. So, uh, let's see. There's the fans, and then that turns the amp off. Now, the cool thing about this is you can turn the fans on without turning the amplifier on, okay? So, if you want to have them fans on a little while, and uh, still be talking barefoot or whatever, let it cool off. And uh, you can turn your sideband delay on too with everything off, which ain't gonna hurt nothing, of course. Uh, some of y'all, like me, I kinda like leaving my SSB delay on at all times, but everything's right here at your finger kit, fingertips, man. Pretty cool, man. I've always wanted to uh, modify one of these for the wireless remote so this is definitely the uh, first one that I've been able to do sweet 16 wise and as you can see everything plugs in right there it's a 5 pin mic connector now this is a custom Y mode okay you don't want to just unplug this and plug it into another amplifier that's a big big no-no this isn't this isn't my normal uh, y mode my normal single or dual or quad Y motes can plug into any amplifier. This is customly done just for yours, okay? Now it can be used with another setup, but it would have to be wired correctly. And it's uh, very simple. You got uh, power coming in. You got power uh, coming in. And basically each relay is just sending power to each other thing. That's the cool thing about the way uh, Texas Star does use their uh, sideband delay because of their PNP keying circuit is they send voltage to the si uh, to the capacitor instead of a ground like we, we do with our NPN keying circuits. So um, 
So you're sending power everywhere. You're just bringing power out of the box into the wine moat, power in the wine moat, a ground the, to light the LEDs and power the module. And then from that point, power is just uh, flowing from that main line coming in. Turn the fan on for that relay, SSB delay, or send power back on into the amplifier, which is the bias voltage as well. So there you go, bud. 15 volts and under for this box. So I'll get all this done, man. Get the screws in it. Get the new sticker right there. Anderson connector. And all that good stuff. And get this thing packed up, man. Hope you enjoy. Anybody got something like this you want to get done, give me a shout. We'll help you out. Gatekeeper. I'm gone now. And I won't be back. Not on this video. <laughs> just kidding. Here, I just want to show you the cool range of this. I'm all the way across the garage on the other end. Okay. Let's see if we can zoom in. Look at old Boots. What you doing, Boots? I tell you what, that girl will sit on the back of my chair while I'm working. And I'm rolling that chair around. I don't know, I ain't really never shown this angle before, but this is the gatekeeper's workshop, which I stay in about 14 plus hours a day. One, two, three tables, counting the fourth one, which I'm going to do most of my work on. The t Got all these big tables, and I'm working on the tiniest table. It don't make no sense, does it? But, uh, but yeah. Oh, back to what I was doing here. But yeah, she'll just hang out on there. I'll be moving that chair, rolling this way, that way. She'll just be sitting there just just, just, just riding the wave, man. All right. So just to show you some of the the uh, range of this. No problem at all. great range this is actually a clone remote the uh, other uh, quad remote I had was not picking up well range wise so luckily I had this remote right here and this is actually a clone remote these are designed to clone other remotes so what I did is I just took this right here and cloned that remote and this has like a lot more power output to it this is a more of the more expensive uh, type remotes right here so all right bud that's it i promise i won't be back after this we'll see you bye-bye